Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Insight Tech Talk. I'm your host, Jillian Viner, and I am thrilled to be joined today by Larry Hahn, the Director of Channel Digital Services at Schneider Electric. Welcome to the podcast, Larry. Thanks, Jillian. I appreciate it. I look forward to talking to you today. We have a lot to talk about because there's so much change in the marketplace right now. There is so much that's top of mind for businesses. Before we get into the details, just give me your elevator pitch. Who is Schneider Electric? What are you doing to help solve the multitude of, of challenges that customers and clients are seeing today? Yeah, sure. So so first of all, Schneider Electric, um, we're not in the shipping business. Uh, we don't make elevators or escalators in case you've seen them around. Uh, we are actually in the energy business. So in um, we don't actually make the energy, but uh, we actually work to make it more efficient so you as a consumer can save. Um, we connect and put up power just about everything around you. Um, and we are constantly thinking about how we can make the most out of the energy and resources uh, so we can drive efficiency uh, into, into the environment. And if you look at our tagline, it's life is on everywhere for everyone at every moment. Um, so, and then specifically for what we're going to talk about today, I work within what they call the secure power division, which was used to be American power conversion or APC. And we're going to talk specifically about what we're doing around power and cooling to actually go and drive efficiency into data centers and distributed environments. You know, we joke all the time about what's keeping IT up at night, how to keep the lights on, but you guys are literally wondering how to keep the lights on. <laughs> we are. That's what we do every <laughs> single day. <laughs> So there's obviously a lot that's happening. What's changed in the market? What trends are you seeing? What are what are you guys trying to, to help clients with? Yeah, so um, it's it's really interesting. There's a, there's a couple of things that that we're seeing are shifts in in the market. Um, typical when people think about power and cooling, I think about really large data centers. Uh, you hear about like the Googles and Amazons of the worlds and and, and everything into the cloud. Uh, but actually, one of the shifts that we're seeing in the market is actually more and more technology is actually being moved outside of those data centers and being brought closer to us as consumers. Um, in fact, there's a stat by, by Gartner that says by 2025, 75% of all data is actually going to be manufactured outside of the data center and, and closer to, uh, to us as consumers. So um, that's actually driving a tremendous shift in regards to how companies look at what they do or how they provide services and, and that experience to their customers. Uh, they need to have more, there's more technology or IT that's actually in environments that weren't designed for it, and um, and they're uh, they're really looking or struggling uh, to to support that. You know, there's uh, one of the things I always talk about is the fact that uh, you know the Great Resignation that you know we hear about it, but it's actually real. As you start thinking about some of these these environments, like a Starbucks, for instance, um, you know they they don't have the people there to go and support the the POS systems and, and and all the technology that enables us to order our drinks remotely. Um, so they're actually looking to they're looking for help. They're actually going to to partners like Insight uh, and asking them to uh, to help them to manage these environments. Um, and that's actually operating uh, a, a trim representing a tremendous opportunity for us. You know, we think about how we can drive more efficiency around power. Um, it's actually challenging us to really collaborate with, uh, with, with partners like Insight to figure out how we can together go and actually solve these problems uh, uh, for the, uh, the business leaders of these businesses. Yeah, I wanna go back to something you said because it was a pretty powerful statistic, something about the, the amount of data that's being created outside the data center and data is being created really by consumers. And it's changing how businesses need to operate, how they think about operating. Can you give us an example of that and kind of what, how you're helping clients do that? Yeah, so um, I kind of referenced it quickly. Um, you know, one of the one of the examples I, I like to give is uh, is around Starbucks. So I said just to go back maybe five six years ago, um, if I wanted to go and get a coffee at Starbucks, I would go to the store. Um, typically, if it was if it was mid morning. I would have to wait because I like to. I like their dark roast, and they stop making their dark roast in the morning. So, you know, I'd go in, I'd order my coffee, and I have to wait for it. And, and typically, that whole experience could take you know 15, 20 minutes. Um, whereas you fast that's forward too today, long for coffee. that's way too long. But, <laughs> but I, I really, I, I really love to start with their coffee, so I was willing to wait for it. Um, so I'm probably not the perfect example of a consumer that would uh, that would go somewhere else. But you know, if we think about today, um, I have an app on my phone. Um, I can basically look up where the store is. I can place my order. So when I go to that store, I just walk in, I grab my order and, and I leave. And that whole time in the store might be 
30 seconds to a minute. Um, and, and what that's, what that's, you know, that, 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 that sea change as far as how we consume is it's really, uh, you know, my expectations are different. Um, I, I expect that coffee to be ready when I walk in or whatever I said I ordered, whereas in the past I was willing to wait. Um, but the other thing that's changing is actually, um, the, the data associated with that. So, because now we have access to, as a consumer, I have visibility to what store has what I want and I know where to go get it and I can order it and it's available. But if you flip that around from a, from a corporate perspective, um, the businesses now have data on their consumers. So now they can actually see how those consumers are, are using their products and services and they can then fine tune them. Um, so in the example of Starbucks, there might be a, there might be a, a special drink in one in a city where through word of mouth, everyone orders a special drink that wasn't on the menu. Well, they can see that that's coming. So first of all, they can work with their supply chain to have the, 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 the ingredients that they need to make that. But then they could actually go and actually put that on the menu in that, mm -hmm. in that store and now actually make it a standard offer. So through data, they're actually changing the way that they're actually providing their services to their customers. So it actually brings value on both sides to the business and also to the, to the customers that are using that service. Yeah, it's a good use of customer data. I think people tend to get really clenchy and uncomfortable when we talk about customer data. But in that case, that really is a good use case. It's not individual data we're talking about. You know, for I love Starbucks too. I used to love their violet drink. It was like a special drink for, for a hot <laughs> moment. And they don't make it anymore. I guess there wasn't enough demand. So um, yep. maybe if I could stir up the data for it, it would be available. Yeah. So, and then, so just, just kind of building on that, you'd ask, well, how do we support that? So if you think about the fact that um, in order to provide, provide those services, that the, the POS system, the, the backend system where you order that stuff has to be up and running. So where, where we come into play is we provide that insurance policy, like we provide the UPSs that keep, that keep that equipment up and running. But we also, through our digital offers, provide the visibility and the data so that those the, either the company themselves, if they're doing it, uh, or the partner they're working with, so if they're working with Insight, can actually help them to maintain that uh, that environment and make sure it is available. So when I do want to order that that uh, that coffee, it's uh, I can do it and, and do it in the time frame that I want. Downtime. You said the optimal word there. No one likes downtime. You just nope. want things to be up and running. So tell me a little bit more about that. Once you once you get your your business up and running, you've you've implemented all your technology, you've got your data going. Um, you know that's that's really the role that you play, right? Like, tell me more about that sort of day two support strategy that you mentioned. Yeah, so that's uh, and that's exactly it. That's the conversation we typically have um, with uh, with with um, the the business leaders at the at, at those companies or even with our partners. It's really so we we just we just went and we implemented this this uh, IT solution that's going to solve this business need, um, and and we just we just left the door. So so what happens next? Um, so if if uh, if there's an issue in regards to that who's responsible for that what does what does that look like today are you are you happy with that with with with, with the response time and who's doing it are you capable of doing it would you like to do it differently uh, which all ties into what you just said day two support right so um what we and we, and we tie that into um on the digital services side and the offers we're providing what we want to know is is a couple of things. First of all, does does the customer have visibility to their environment, or through their partner, through Insight, do they have visibility to that environment? And then, um, who's actually going to monitor that? So, you know, through our software, we actually can provide that visibility. We can provide that data as to what's going on with those assets. Um, but then, someone has to look at that and take that data and do something with it. So that's the that's the monitoring piece. Typically, that's a that's a networking operating center, uh, or within within the, cu the the customer's business, there might be a, a group of people and their IT staff that's responsible for looking at that. So they they monitor and then they try and fix stuff virtually. Um, and then the last piece is well, sometimes they can't do that. Um, so then someone has to go on site. So who is going to do that? Is it is there is there a person at the customer that can do that, or is there uh, is there a partner that does that on their behalf? Or in another scenario, do they you know would they like Schneider to do that for them? So um, we've actually built our 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 value prop, um, our support mechanism around flexibility. So we just ask um, we ask the businesses that we're working with and then our partners just to answer those questions. So. Do you have the visibility? If not, okay, we'll use our software. Once you have that, who's going to monitor it and then who's going to service it? And depending on the answer of that, um, that will then dictate what kind of solution we put together and how we collaborate with, with an insight. Uh, and, and, and 
uh, in this particular example with Insight, we're actually already working with them to uh, with your teams to incorporate our software into your NOC um, and actually <laughs> training your service people to go do that service. So, in the very near future, Insight is going to be providing that on behalf of your of your customers um, to, uh, to in your your uh, um, your your, your uh, the business leaders you're working with to help them solve those business problems. I love that. Just hearing you talk about that, we, we talk a lot about cybersecurity right now, obviously, and having the importance of, of setting up a backup system. Mm-hmm. And there's you just pointed out so many pivotal moments that can maybe be forgotten about. It's like you invest in a solution, you get everything up and running, and you feel like everything's great. But then if and when something does go wrong, do you know the actual process? Do you know who to, who to call when something goes wrong? Um, so it's great that you kind of outlined all of that. Um, so... You've talked about um, how that how that happens. I'm assuming that you guys can basically help any industry because every every sort of business is running into the same issues. What do you, what's the first step if somebody wants to make sure that they're filling in those gaps and make sure that their business is you know on track for success? What do they do? How do you help figure out what they need? Yeah, so um, we uh, we typically start um, with with uh, with what we call a digital assessment. So uh, within our our EcoStructure IT Expert software, which is what provides that visibility, we actually built in uh, a couple of different assessments that will help uh, help the business understand the health of their UPSs. Uh, and also give them a snapshot, um, more from a physical security perspective. But if if, uh, if there's uh, any any potential um, vulnerabilities with those devices, um, so through the UPS assessment, we'll actually go and look at the battery wear. We'll actually be able to tell them um, when uh, the, basically the current state of the battery. We'll actually be able to tell them when that battery is going to fail. Uh, which is actually really important because uh, we, we, we talk to a lot of customers and in some cases they just wait till failure. And at that point, you know, we have that, 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 that bad word downtime. Uh, <laughs> or we have other customers which will just replace their batteries every three years. Um, they just they just on a regular schedule, which you know, we'll definitely make sure they have availability. But that may not be the most cost effective way to drive the business. So we can actually right. help them pinpoint exactly when those, those batteries are going to fail. But the other thing is we actually look at the attributes that drive that that are going to drive that battery to failure. So we look at not only the um, the number of cycles, how many times is that battery ch- re- being recharged? We look at temperature in the room um, and then also just the overall in- in environment. And based off of that, we could actually make some recommendations that they could actually potentially even extend the life of that battery. And that's another part of what we provide is we tell them, hey, if you can if you can if you can change the temperature profile within that environment, we can actually extend the life of that battery for three or six months. Um, so the, the, the nice thing about that is two things. One, they, 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 have the, they have the data they need to make business decisions. They also have the ability to potentially change an outcome. Uh, so like if you're looking at a budget cycle, um, they might potentially be able to extend the life of that battery into the next budget cycle and actually maybe save that money and apply it to something else that it might need to do in their business. So that's, that's one way through, through data we can actually help drive different business outcomes. Uh, and then on the security side, uh, we'll actually go and look at the firmware of those devices and let them know one, if, it, if it's if it's up to up to date, because um, if you don't keep your firmware up to date, it could potentially be a backdoor uh, into your network. And we wouldn't think of a UPS as a, as a potential cybersecurity threat, but it could be. So we'll actually tell them, uh, we'll tell them if it is, and we'll also tell them if that unit is capable of taking the latest version of firmware. Because um, a lot of times people they don't think about the fact that actually it might be aged out. Um, so again, through that, we can actually drive continuity of service by making sure um, that their their um, their their devices are where they should be. But also, if they're in a compliance agent uh, uh, industry, um, enable them to make sure they're staying in compliance of of what they need to with regards to to, to their business rules. I love it. There's something really important I want to ask you about, and we're just about on time here, but. Sustainability, I know, is a big piece for Schneider Electric. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, actually, uh, Schneider Electric is one of the leaders in uh, in, in sustainability. Um, we actually were voted the number one most sustainable company by uh, uh, by uh, Global 100. Congratulations! And been, oh, thank you. And uh, we've actually been part of the Corporate Knights Global 100 for 11 years. So it's it is really at the DNA of what we of what we are about. Uh, we actually publish a sustainability report every year. It's about 180 pages where we actually mark down exactly the the, the metrics that we have, and we're very transparent in regards to what we're doing. As we as we 
to kind of look at what uh, we do specifically within the APC or secure power segment, uh, we're actually coming out with with eco eco driven solutions. Where you're going to see something about uh, um, our uh, green premium solutions uh, on the uh, on the the, mo the monitoring and, and services side. Uh, we're looking at actually pulling in information in regards to uh, embedded carbon, and then also helping uh, uh, companies manage their uh, their car carbon footprint, and then through the end of the life cycle, actually understand how we drive carbon out of the footprint. So if you have companies that are that you're working with that have uh, sustainability goals, we actually can actually help them uh, get through, through that process and then provide the services to enable them to meet them. Wonderful. I don't know any business right now that doesn't have goals related to sustainability <laughs> one way or form. So that's great to know. Larry, thank you so much for your time today. I learned so much from you. Um, just really appreciate your insights. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. It's a great subject. Thank you. Yeah, and if you're listening and would like to learn more information, you can go to insight.com and just search for Schneider Electric. We'll also include some helpful links in our show notes. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll catch you next time on Insight Tech Talk.